All right, so uh, welcome to the uh, first lecture about the physical properties of sound. This is from the seventh lecture of the fourth week. And uh, we're going to be using uh, uh, Dr. Andrea's uh, lecture slides, so give credit where credit is due. Thank you, Dr. Andrea. This is just an introductory video about the basic properties and parameters of sound as a wave. Uh, we're going to go through uh, the range of human hearing and the formation of a sound wave. Uh, we're not going to get into the mechanisms that's going to be in the next video. Even in this uh, introductory portion, there still have been questions that were asked on things that we're going to touch on here, and I'm going to direct you towards the actual questions that were asked, the ones that I remember at least. So uh, let's get started. Uh, sound waves. Uh, sound is a wave just like, uh, just like any other wave, but differently from uh, light waves, so to say, differently from light waves, sound is a mechanical wave. Sound is a mechanical wave, which means that it requires a medium. So sound requires a medium. That means it's a mechanical wave. And that was actually a relation analysis question. I believe it was uh, it was one of the one of the self controls. I believe it may have been yeah the first self control, um, saying something along the lines of uh, sound sound waves require uh, requires a medium to propagate through because sound is a mechanical wave. True statements. Uh, so right off the bat, we're talking about something that was represented, and uh, sound can exist both as longitudinal and as transverse waves. We uh, we initially thought, oh, sound is only a longitudinal wave, and light is a transverse wave, but it's not always the case. Uh, for the most part, uh, sound is a longitudinal wave. So uh, what we're talking about when sound goes sound goes through gas and uh, liquids, it behaves as a longitudinal wave. Longitudinal wave. And this makes sense to us. But when sound goes through uh, the, sometimes the surface of liquids, the surface of liquids, or uh, solids, it can also show us a transverse wave. Transverse transversal waves as well. So it's important to know that although uh, when we talk about um, uh, sound waves and later ultrasound, ultrasound obviously goes uh, as far as imaging or therapeutic ultrasound, we're talking about tissues. And tissues or soft tissues in our body behave, uh, they're pretty much uh, the same as liquid as far as their property, and we're going to get to that. But when uh, sound travels through tissues, it, uh, it will uh, demonstrate longitudinal, uh, a longitudinal wave. And that's uh, kind of important to know in case you are asked. So sound requires a medium because it's a mechanical wave. It's a mechanical disturbance. It is very important to understand. I'm just going to go through real quick. It's not that particles move from one, way, one place to the other. It's that, that particles oscillate. Particles here oscillate. And we're going to see an animation a little later. So this is longitudinal wave, this is a transverse wave. And uh, as far as parameters, it's different parameters, this is also taken from the lecture slide. This is a, this is a pretty decent lecture slide, and I'm going to address this in a second. But uh, when we were talking about wavelength, uh, this is the wavelength uh, as calculated for uh, the uh, longitudinal waves. We have uh, what we call, or oh, I'm not going to depict the uh, actual uh, the actual properties, but you have an area where there's a higher density of particles oscillating at that point. And if you take that area, let's just say I have there you go. Let's just say this area, this area, this area, they all have a, a greater mass of particles at a given point. And if you take this distance here, this will be your wavelength for sound. So this will be your wavelength. And this is what's indicated here. And this equation, this was also present in one of the finals, one of the finals in 2011. And C here is the speed of sound, not to be confused by the speed of light, also denoted by C. 
So the speed of sound, C, and again, C for speed of sound equals frequency times lambda, times the wavelength. So we can solve for the uh, sound frequency or for the sound speed if uh, we have uh, one of the two parameters here interchangeably. And the question was, uh, uh, one of these two parameters was given, I believe, and the third needed to be calculated. And when you're talking about calculation in basic biophysics course, you're talking about simple calculations, just like this one. Because the, uh, the focus is on understanding and interpreting uh, different processes that occur and their implications and uh, different phenomena rather than sitting down with a calculator and punching in the numbers. So this was actually present as a question in one of the finals. So this is as far as the parameters, frequency, uh, speed, and we're going to get uh, more in depth into those things uh, as we go through this, uh, this presentation by Dr. Andrea. So let's go through the range of human hearing. And we, this is also taken from the lecture slide. This, it's a really good lecture slide. We're going to be using it often. This is the acoustic range. By acoustic, we mean this is what we can hear. It is very important to tell you that in the minimals, in the minimals, they said that the acoustic range is 16 hertz to 16 kilohertz. And here, it is 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. It's not that one of them is right and one of them is wrong. This, this, is, this is somewhat based on experiment. This is, uh, this is based on experiment. And these, these, two, uh, these two quantities are correct. So whenever you're asked, if I were to be asked in a minimal part, I would actually give these two figures just, just, to, uh, just to let them know that I uh, know that they gave us two different figures, but they both should be acceptable. They are both correct. Essentially, anything below these frequencies, if this is 16 hertz or 20 hertz, anything below that we cannot hear, that is infrasound. We cannot hear. And again, when we say we cannot hear, I'm not saying that it's impossible to hear. I, I'm saying humans cannot hear this sound. Obviously, other, or other, um, other uh, creatures, other animals can hear sounds uh, uh, outside our frequencies, outside our acoustic frequencies. Anything above this would be ultrasound. There's also uh, an expression called hypersound, uh, but really we, we will be focusing on ultrasound, basically. This is, this is all that we really care about. And uh, usually for diagnostic uh, purposes, you would get something along uh, two, meg 2 megahertz to 10 megahertz, I believe, something along that line. Now, in case you're not familiar with hertz, you should really be, because uh, this is a measure of... Uh, this is, uh, this is a measure of waves in general, so you shouldn't be familiar with it. But if you're not, uh, I'm just going to give you a heads up. Hertz means cycles, cycles per second. When I mean cycles, uh, let's just say this, this, is a, this is a wave. I'm actually asking how many times, how many times does, does this motion here repeat? Does this motion here repeat in a second? If it repeats once, I have one hertz. One repetition through one second is one hertz. And uh, two megahertz is something along the lines of right around two million, uh, two million uh, cycles per second. Whereas 20 hertz is 20 cycles per second, 20 kilohertz is 20,000 cycles per second. And you can just multiply when you want to get to the megahertz. So you can appreciate this is a, ultrasound is a great, uh, great, great amount of cycles per second. So this is what we really mean. So good. We got the hertz out of the way just, just for kicks. And uh, we're just going to finish off with the formation of a sound wave. And this is just an introductory idea. And this is just going to, an introductory idea because the formation of sound waves can be done by three mechanisms that I'm going to cover in the next video. Those mechanisms are super important. But what's important to understand is that we have a source. That source has the ability to bring the particles around it into motion. And that's the idea, the source of vibration. Basically, anything that vibrates can and will produce a sound. We may or may not be able to hear it, but anything that vibrates will produce a sound. So basically, we can take uh, whatever element, if we cause it to, uh, to vibrate, it will emit a sound. 
So this should clue you in as to how we can generate ultrasounds. And basically, this source just brings the medium into motion. And if you want to see a nice animation, this is a nice animation that I took off of uh, www.passmyexams.co.uk. It's a nice website that uh, has the fundamentals. But although it may seem as if particles are moving from the left side to the right side, particles are staying in the same place. They just oscillate from right to left. And the medium here is air. The source is uh, the the, the uh, speaker itself, the vibrating portion of the speaker. And uh, I think this is uh, giving me a migraine here, so I'm going to stop looking at it. Okay. So this is pretty much uh, the basics of uh, how to how we what we need to form a sound wave. In the next video, we're going to get started with uh, uh, the different mechanisms. Uh, inverse piezoelectric effect or uh, inverse piezoelectricity electrostriction and magneto magnetostriction all right see you in the next video